from a recording standpoint. So you guys can rejoin if you wish. And here we go. Okay. So let's, all right, so let's review real quickly since this is gonna be a new recording. So events are like binary semaphores, um, but instead of storing a single flag, they can store multiple flags. Okay, and we're going to call an event instance one of these structures and hold multiple bits of information. Um, so there's a catch that's a little different. So with a semaphore, I can have multiple tasks pending on the same semaphore. Okay, so I can have tasks pending on the same semaphore. Now, only the higher priority task will run for each post, right? So we got two guys pending on the same semaphore, get posted, high priority task runs, the other guy is still waiting, you post again and it, and it goes. With, um, with events, only one task at a time can pend on a particular event instance, okay? Now you can have a whole bunch of event instances, that would be groups of event flags, because that's only limited by the amount of memory you're willing to spend on it. But in terms of pending on a particular group of flags, only one task at a time can pend on a group of flags, and the operating system enforces that real time. Okay, so if you do a pinned on an event, and somebody else is already pending on the same event, then the operating system is going to return an error code instead of doing a pin. Now, that seems inconvenient, but what it really means is, is that from a design standpoint, you need to architect so that for any given event, you've only got one, we we'll call it listener, one person that's got one task that's going to depend on that event, and you never pass that off to a different task. Okay, because keep in mind with events just like semaphores, hey, look, if I want to, if I've got, say, an interrupt function that's going to, that's going to post to one event, I can have a post to two events. That doesn't cost me that much extra to have it post to two events if I need two people to be waiting on the same kind of event. So basically what you're going to be doing here is that you're going to be creating a bit mask when you get ready to pin on an event. And your bit mask is going to be either an or bit mask or an and bit mask. The or bit mask is if any one of the bits that I turn on in my bit mask that I pass it to is turned on, then I stop my pin. I've been successful. In the and bit mask, all of the bits that I've selected have to be on, okay? And what happens is, is that, well, we'll talk about that here when we get to the, uh, the next thing. So let's take a look at, let's say that I've got an event instance here, and I've got event one, event two, event three, event four, event five. And in this case, I'm showing you a 32-bit event instance, okay? So I've got three events here, zero, one, two, three, okay? And so let's do an example for an AND mask. So let's say that I'm going to do a pinned with an AND mask. So on this event pinned, AND mask, OR mask. If the OR mask is zero, it ignores it. If the AND mask is zero, it ignores that. So AND mask, zero E. What's the bit pattern for a zero E? So let's just do the last the last four bits. What are the last four bits for an E? One 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 zero, right? So one 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 zero is E, right? So task two, 
This is an AND mask of zero E. So you have to have all the bits set of zero E for it to stop pending. So I pinned on E and task two post O2. Okay, that sets that bit. Task four post O8, that bit. We're still pending here. Task two post four. Now they're all there, right? All those bits are set. And so now task one is ready. And the return code from this event pin call is E. It's the bits that are set. And when it does this, the bits in that mask are automatically cleared out. Okay, so if I were to pin on it immediately again, it would pause until we get more posts. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's a different example. And in this case, what I wanted to show you is that it doesn't affect bits that aren't part of your mask. So here, again, we're pending on E, and task seven, post, we did the post two from task two. Task seven, post one, sets that bit. But that's not part of our bit mask, right? So we come on down here, and everything happens just like, there, there we're matching the E, but we only got the E part, the part that's in the mask. This stays there. So if we needed to do a pin later on on that particular event, we could. Okay, it only clears out the stuff that we're looking at for that particular pin. All right, so an OR mask. OR mask, if anything in, in the list, okay? So in this case, I'm masking on hex seven zero. So seven zero, top four bits, zero one one one, right? Okay. So it's off, and I got something sitting in there because I posted to two with my task two, right? I didn't do anything. But now this event and this event post to one here. Well, that doesn't do anything. This guy posts two O hex right here. So I got those bits set. So that's a two, three, right? Now what's gonna happen is that I'm going to execute, I'm gonna uh, fall out of my pin, and my return value is gonna be two hex, which has got that. Now, this is a little harder to show in the example. Did I, I didn't do an example, no, I didn't do an example before. This is, this is one where you kinda have to get your head wrapped around it a bit. It is possible in an or mask situation for me to be pending somebody to post something that sets off the or mask, but I don't get restarted right away because there's another higher priority task ahead of me, right? So it's possible, and that could potentially post something else that's part of or mask. So it's possible to actually have two tasks post two bits in the OR mask at any given time on an event. If that happens, it works kind of like an AND mask. It still, it'll return you both those bits, the return value, so let's say that it was um, a, a four, a four O. It would return, instead of four O, it would return six O, because both the two and the four had been posted, Two plus six. Last time I checked, I'm pretty sure of that math. Uh, even in hex, I can add two and four, and still get six. Um, but that's so it's going to clear those out. So the OR mask also clears out every time the OR mask pin finishes. It clears out all of the bits that were associated with the OR and returns to you all of the bits that were set before you went off and, and did your thing. Now, probably next week, we will start talking about safety, okay? Because, yeah, fine. Oh. We'll be talking about safety. 
And one of the really cool places that you can use events are with a health function. Health functions are really gnarly because a health function, so we are in the embedded systems business here. You know, we, at, at the end of the day, all of you guys are learning how to design embedded systems, okay? And the short definition for me for an embedded system is an embedded system is a device that when you get the blue screen of death, it really is the blue screen of death. Somebody's gonna die, okay? That's not always the case, right? We've got blue screens of death that we get on the car radio. The car radio crashes, you know what? We're probably not gonna crash unless we're busy pushing the button, can't get it to respond and not paying attention to the car in front of us. But as a rule, uh, an embedded system is, is a system that just simply cannot fail. We're going to talk about how we take care of that in a, um, uh, in a um, uh, real-time environment using a kernel, using an operating system, because a watchdog timer isn't adequate. Okay, watchdog timer, and you know, if you've got a single head, watchdog timer is great, because if I get off stuck doing something, where I'm not triggering the watchdog timer, eventually the watchdog timer will die and do its thing, right? In a real operating system, it is entirely possible that you have two or three tasks that are off in the weeds and everything else is working just fine, okay? That is entirely possible, happens all the time. So we are gonna talk about how to do that and events are gonna be a really big part of that. So creating events, um, imagine, Again, we've got the event params init function. Um, we've got a construct function uh, that really doesn't, we don't pass it any real parameters other than the structure. And when we use it, oh, and we've got the handle as well. And when we, all we have to do is we create the event and then to post the event, we, uh, we have we set up bit masks and we pass the the bit mask and voila you're off to the races. And pending is basically we pass it either an and events uh, an an and mask and a zero or a zero and an or mask. Okay. Um, it turns out that if you provide non-zero values for the AND and the OR mask, TI has defined behavior, which is good. I will tell you, don't ever use the defined behavior because it's kind of a bad way to structure things because what, if you provide both an AND mask and an OR mask, the pin will wait until all the AND mask bits are set and any one of the OR bits are set. And that just seems, I, I, can't, I have not come up with a scenario where I think that that's a good idea. There may be one, you guys may find one, but to TI's credit, they at least, because of the way they've done their calling conventions, to TI's credit, at least they've told you how it behaves in that case. Any questions about events? Yes. No, no, if you do both, if you do, a, if you pinned on both the AND and the OR mask, that's that defined behavior you're talking about. All of the bits in the AND mask have to be set before the pin returns, and any one of the bits in the OR mask has to be set, and it will return you all of the bits that were set that were in either the and, that were in both the AND and the OR mask. Okay? And, and if the AND mask and the OR mask are identical, then it's just weird. But it'll work, it, it, it'll basically work. If man mask and the OR mask are identical, it basically is, is an AND mask because of that particular definition. Does that answer the question? Okay. Anything else? 
Cool. Well, we're done. It looks like we're going to be posting two videos this week uh, on this one. And uh, uh, post it if you have issues during the week. Have a great one.